fame. Let's go. I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. Cacao. What the fuck is up, people? <laughs> True Talk Sessions Tuesdays. I'm like, I'm not, I'm gonna show up here tonight. You never know if I'm on or not. You tune in Tuesday, like, this thing ain't even on this week. <laughs> now, now you got Latino on with you. Now I got my special guest for the night. Surprise! Special guest host. Surprise! Uh, you know, we got uh, my, my guest for the night is Debo, CEO of Queen of the Ring. Uh, people calling me right now. That's This is uh, the head at a Barclay Center calling me right now. Really? A lot for real. Like, yeah, you run the Barclay Center. Yes, kind of shit I do. I'm coming with you next time. <laughs> you know, you need a video man, right? I got you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's going on, people? Uh, you know, so being that the guest is running a little late, he's coming though. Uh, you know, we decided to improvise till he gets here. It's, you know, the, the people who run in the bar. I'm, I'm True back. Lex. He's taking forever. Yeah, this is True Lex. I'm True Lex. True a- asshole. In his, AKA in his Lex. You know, whatever you want to call me, no friend, doubt. associate. No doubt. Acquaintance. Shout out to Lachi in the background. Ah, so what's good, Lex? What's up, man? I'm glad to be on here. Anybody need a video shot? This is the man right here. Yeah. Price is, is uh, I charge. He charges. No free shit going on. Top of the line camera. Y'all rappers out there need some video shot. You know what I mean? Holla at him. Give out your email address. For okay, business. So uh, Lex, 15MOFE at gmail.com. Okay, as you see, you have the 15MOFE. Just, just put LEX in front of 15MOFE. And you got my email. Hey, yo, uh, right away, first of all, uh, let's get into the Zimmerman trial. Jesus. Oh, my gosh. You hit me with the Zimmerman trial? Right away. Like, cause, Dang. Because I, I was watching, and I see this motherfucker say, they said, uh, do you regret, you know, you getting out the car that night? And he said, no, it was in God's plan. I mean, this nigga is saying some bold shit on the stand, yo. Like, yeah. that's some bold shit to say. God's plan for him to get out the car that night. You, you know why he's at fault? Why? Because I'm Zimmerman's at fault. Because the the I operator... Know, I, knew, I knew who the fuck you was talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better say Zimmerman. <laughs> or he going Zimmerman me. But yeah, yeah. But, uh, operator. Yeah, so I there's one part where he's on the phone with the operator and he's like, um, he's telling him about Trayvon, and then the operator's like, "All right, don't go near him. Just wait till the police get there." Yeah. And he did not listen. He just like completely ignored that. He should have just taken orders and be like, yeah. "I'm gonna chill." All right. He he's real bold on this thing. This has been a weird. Uh, well, him and uh, the chick, uh, Trayvon's friend, like the girl who you saw her. This was like the worst. So, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. This is ratchetness at its best. Understand? And and it was like people were in agreement of this. They were upset, but then there was some people that was like, "Give her a break." You know, she's a little girl. This and that. She's nervous. And I had to tell you, these people, they prep you for this type of shit before you even get the trap. You know what I mean? They have you come to the office and they do the little thing and they they question you and they let you know how you're gonna be questioned when it's a trial like this. So I was trying to tell people they purposely wanted this chick on the stand for her ratchetness. This bitch question she was answering was just terrible. Like no intelligence at all, man. It was just straight, straight my straight Florida ratchetness. So through her they were trying to make Trayvon look bad. Yeah, and like associated with Yes, it, yes. Trayvon. Like he's associated with these first forty eight bitches. You know what I mean? Like she's <laughs> one of those. Like it was terrible, man. And then it, it made me realize too, like, uh us. Us, like you know, like basically society, we don't raise our kids properly anymore, and there's some ratchet mothers out there and parents too. So it goes back further than the kids, but it's mm-hmm. like it, it makes you be like, damn, that makes you stop and realize, like, yo, we we really got a lot of fucked up kids mm-hmm. out here in the world, a lot of fucked up parents behind them. Like uh, this girl was like 15, 16 years old, and it was like, damn, I didn't see that, but oh, so she man. was just like, I'm quite sure the shit made YouTube. You know, yeah, everything makes fucking YouTube nowadays. I'm quite sure. I'm sitting here sending out. Tweets and shit about Debo gonna be on the show to all the yeah. female battle rappers and shit, you know what I mean? And blasting off at them right now. Yeah. Got Uncle Rod, the owner of the station, say, Y'all get on your fucking yeah. jaw, let them know who's coming up there. This dude, Debo, who's coming today, he's the CEO of the Queen of the Ring. That's the female battle league. And that's, it's, it's equivalent to URL TV and um, Arsenal's uh, battle league, too. Uh, you know, Smack's battle league. So uh, this is like, uh, you know, it's a big interview. 
this guy is coming from behind the scenes. Much props. Much yeah, props. he 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 doesn't he he plays behind the scene. It's like he lets Mr. Grind and uh Babs uh Babs Bunny do everything. So he's like coming from behind the scenes now. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he's looking to make we, we're getting uh, exclusive more interviews. Of appearance in battles. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. You know, we getting out there grinding, man. You know, we was at the uh the battle, the uh a night of main events. Uh, yeah. URL TV like a week and a half ago for smacking them. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit was off the fucking hook. I heard, I heard. The line was, was around the corner, around the corner, around the corner, my yeah. nigga. This how'd, shit was bigger than the summer madness. In? Did y'all get in? Oh, yeah, we was good this time. Y'all didn't have to no wait on No problem. Line. What? Yo, we stood across the street doing interviews and shit, looking at the line. Yeah. Uh, you know, a couple of people was remembering us from last time and from being here and shit. That's dope. That's and, uh, dope. Yeah, well, actually, we didn't wear no laminates. We didn't wear our tags either. People just remembered us. Nice. So uh, when it was time, we ready to go in. We yeah, we called them. They came downstairs and got us. Took us upstairs to VIP. Passed the bands. We even had to wear no bands. Much took, props to yeah. them for that. Chilling because upstairs dang. with um, Adrian Bailey and uh, Kevin Durant and shit like that. Yeah, we you rubbing, met them personally? Yeah, we was rubbing elbows, man. They was up in VIP, too. Clap it up. It's 15 years of fame, man. We making moves, man. Woo! Woo! You know what I mean? I'm sweating. Shout out to Norms. <laughs> uh, he handled his finish. You know what I mean? He, he made sure he was dead in the building. Uh, it was just long as hell. That shit was like eight hours. We can't even, we can't stay that long. So that was crazy. Was standing and stuff. Yeah, it was. After, I know? heard there was like a twenty minute intermission. Yeah, it was each one. because it was so big. It was like every celebrity was on stage, and then it was like the people filming the camera crew. They had a big, big budget camera crew. There's cranes and everything this time. Yeah, and yeah. They, so they was like they had positions of the cameras where people couldn't be on stage. So it was like after a while, they was like, "Yo, you know, at the end of the battle, like, yo, they got to clear the stage, but nobody was moving. You know, niggas, mm-hmm. everybody still talking and shit. Then when they cleared some of the stage, the next two battle rappers coming on with their entourage. So it was like packed again. So it was like yeah. twenty minutes down in between each battle. Yeah. But need to get it was organized. Yeah, though. yeah. Wow. It was good luck though. They had a lot of celebs in the building, man. I give them that. They did their numbers, Kevin man. Durant. Yeah, yeah, that shit's crazy. I got to drive. It's crazy because I stood next to uh, <laughs> I stood next to uh, uh, the boxing nigga Bailey and shit who fought the night before in Brooklyn okay. Center, right in Brooklyn. I stood next to him. I'm looking down on the nigga like this little ass peak squeak motherfucker. Like that nigga like four foot two. Like he, <laughs> yeah. And then ten minutes later, <laughs> ten minutes later, I'm turning around. I'm like this. Oh shit, Kelly Durant! <laughs> like, like, like a oh, bitch. What up, like, dude? What up, Kelly? You like, like it? Hey, I like, yo. I like the sneakers. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, right oh. It's just crazy, you With the sound effects, shout, shout out. Shout out to Lachie. Yo, he's reading my mind today because I meant to hit you up earlier and say get the sound effects and shit. And then he, look, he's on point. He's been stepping up, man. He loves his job. I see. But you know why he loves his job. We ain't gonna mention it. But he loves his job oh, for specific right. reasons. Right. 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 The benefits. <laughs> Lachi got me drinking some weird shit. What's the name of it again? Lemonade. Cabo. <laughs> it looked like lemonade. It's green tea. And then he dipped some Cabo. Cabo? Cabo in it, right? I, dang. Yo, it's from Nigeria. It's from Nigeria. Shout out to Cabo too. The it's artist. from Nigeria. It's from Nigeria. <laughs> Like that means something. Like, it's from Nigeria. Oh, okay. He just did a commercial. This is from Nigeria. <laughs> he just did a live commercial for Nigeria. Now you know when I say I be sipping on that potion, that, I really need a potion. Like which doctor? By the way, that's cocaine and liquid yeah, form. Yeah, this motherfucker about to have me in here grooving off of some natural shit. Man. If I nod the fuck out, hit my head on the table. <laughs> be like, like, yeah, like, be like, <laughs> <laughs> Got me on that, that uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria Mali. <laughs> like, yo. Oh, man. I was keeping uh, Nelson Mandela alive. Oh, uh, that's longer. fucked up. See, this is why I got him on right now. That's <laughs> fucked up. You know they got them natural herbs. You see the shit this nigga be saying? Oh, man. Worst part is, like, like in the beginning of the week, somebody hit me was like, yo, Nelson Mandela just died. So I'm like, oh, word. I ain't bothered to check. I wake up the next morning, I'm seeing TV. And they're like, yeah, so he's still he's still kicking. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yo, he's strong. People yeah. spread, yo, people be quick to say you somebody's dead. The thing is, like, 
Anybody could crack a joke about Nelson, but it don't phase him because he's been through hell. Yeah, that nigga was locked like, up for was, 50 was, years, right? Yeah. Some shit like that. Nigga, look, yeah, he like, he was to, right? He was tortured, I've been, right? Yeah, I've been tortured, locked up in jail. And I, this that shit kava, don't phase me. That kava, he off that kava. Well, Lachi has from Nigeria. That's what's keeping <laughs> Nelson Mandela strong and healthy oh and, and God, alive. Nigga, he's still here because of kava. <laughs> Yo, yo, let me see that bottle, yo. I gotta, it's I gotta show people over there. I gotta show people this shit. It's organic it's, over there. It's coconut bark from Nigeria. It's uh, oh, it promotes is, uh, peaceful relaxation, reduces stress and frustration. I hear that hot shit. How old is Calvin. Nelson? How old is no? no. Nelson 90, 90 years old, right? He 90? I think he's like 90, ain't he? It's organic. Is he 90? Like, I'll give it back to you. Relax. This <laughs> like, like, keep my shit there. You ain't going back on the air. You ain't that. <laughs> Yo, oh my God. Like, you ain't Yo. going back on the air. I'm going to mute you. <laughs> give it back. Give my drops. <laughs> I see you it's a little well bossy, yo. How many drops you got to put in? He said, like, 40. Yo, he put 40 some... drops? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yo? Yo, he puts one in his mouth every hour. On Yo, the say, hour. Hold on, hold on. Shake well before you. Two to five times per day. Take 30 to 40 drops of little water. Two to five times per day, you got to drop 30 to 40 drops of water? No, that's if you're like... If you're, if you're dying. Why not just pour the shit in it? <laughs> that's damn near pouring the shit in, doing that many drops. Not each drop has a whole bunch of I've not- never seen nothing that gave instructions to do that many drops from something into some He's water 90, and shit. Nelson now? He's 90 big something, brother right? now, he's 94. 94. I knew he was in his 90s, my nigga. And let me tell you something. That's fucked up. Talking about Nelson Mandela and to be like, my nigga. <laughs> like, I didn't say that. You I said did. it. <laughs> you got a pass. Oh, shit. <laughs> anyway. What the fuck, nigga? You, what are you, Spanish, right? Yeah, right I, I, I say it. Yeah, you can but, say uh, nigga. Nah, it's the Caucasians nah, who don't him, have a pass. Damn, I want to call him Big Brother now. No doubt. I like that. Because big he, Brother now. He's an inspiration. And let me tell you something. My grandfather's 96. His wife is an inspiration, too. She was, that was a true trooper, yeah. yo. She stuck all that time waiting for that thing. It's the vegetables. That's what it is? And Kava. That's what keeps and Kava? them alive. My grandfather used to eat healthy. He ate healthy, I'm sure. Yeah. Come on. They don't got no chicken in Africa. What the fuck? Why they chickens got no chickens? are dead. Like, chickens, I heard from a dude... From Africa, when I went to audio engineering school, he was like, "Yo, when they there's certain villages mm-hmm. that when they get a chicken, they cook a chicken for the whole village, and it's they's the celebration." You hear this shit? Yo, this nigga's foul, yeah. yo. Why they can't have chickens? No, in that's Africa? what another African told me. They have chickens, but it's it's spare. I met like, an African about eight nine years ago who told me in their country they sell the cats. No, it was Haiti. My bad. I apologize, Africans. <laughs> what? Yeah, hey, I, I heard he this said, about a bit. They sell, they sell the cats, like okay. at deli, like like no, they cook this them. Dude they told eat me it. he was like, yo, there's villages, his hometown village. I don't know where it was, but he said when they have when they cook a chick, is a chicken for the village is a yeah. celebration because it's so it's. There's not enough to spare. Like here, that we just got chickens on, you know. You got chickens on what? On deck. On you welfare. We shit. got chickens on welfare over here. We got chickens <laughs> on anything. We got chickens smoking weed. Oh, this motherfucker. <laughs> shout out to the chicken heads. But shout out to Africa. You think they got chicken heads in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. How's they gonna feed the tourists? Come on. <laughs> no, you stupid. Come on, man. Why you think white people go to Africa? Shout out to the chicken not heads. Not for the in politics. Africa. <laughs> chicken heads in Africa. Imagine, listen, you know you gotta be there. I'm talking about the female chicken heads, yo. If white you know people... you gotta be real, like, if you're a female chicken head in Africa, you know, because think about the female chicken heads out here in America. Now imagine, that they must be like the lowest, like, well, almost the lowest. They, they almost the lowest chicken heads. Hmm. Right? Now imagine in Africa, a chicken head. How low is a chicken head in Africa? <laughs> well, they're, I would consider them organic, so they're better. <laughs> <laughs> so they're better over there. <laughs> yo, let's play a video, man. Uh, let's play that lavish J. Let him have it, yo. Let's, let's get to that real quick. We got a lot of videos lined up today. Uh, we're going to be playing videos for my dude Sam Black. Uh, Loto Lux featuring Red and Meth. NJ Threat featuring AR Ad. Fred the Godson. Uh, Trips and Slim. 
Uh, Sibius, Joan, my son, MP, Headache. We got some videos on him today. Like I said, our guest is Debo, CEO of Queen of the Ring. He be on tonight, man. We be right back, man. True Talk Sessions Tuesday, you heard? Pure fuckery. Let's go! Yeah, so we back. Uh, that was Lavish J. Let him have it. You, know, you see the youth doing their numbers. Mm. The boy, he got a hot new single he just released to, uh, this week. Uh, he's down in Georgia chilling and shit. What's going on? We taking pictures live on the air, my nigga. One more, one more. He no. got that out of focus. There we go. I look Yo. hard in that one. Yeah. Listen. Uh, oh shit! Listen. Uh, since since we talking about blacks and shit. <laughs> but look. My check. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's touch Paula Dean. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> look. Yeah, Yo, she got some good peach you cobbler. Me? How you know you ate it? No. You ate her peach cobbler. How you know she got some good peach cobbler, nigga? Then how you gonna say she got some? I wanna good ask something. Did Don King, not Don King? Um, oh shit, Don King knocking down. Paula what's his Dean? name? Um, the Reverend. Oh, uh, uh Reverend, uh, not Jesse Jackson. Al Sharpton. <laughs> Al Sharpton. I thought Tommy. I, I, I was gonna say Jesse Jackson. I'm like, Al, Al, big boy Al. Did he mention anything about Paula? Yeah, that's weird. I don't know if he did or didn't either. If it was. Uh, I thought he did though. If a he, black he person like, was like reporting her and, and the lawsuit yeah. was from a black person He'd to be her, there right there on deck. he'd be like, "Yeah, uh, they took Paula Dean what she said twenty years ago. Horrible." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if it was money in the form, but right now it's not because uh, she's losing endorsements. You know what I mean? Left and right. She'll be she, back. So, yeah, yeah. She yeah, Paula yeah. Dean. Yeah, Paula Dean gangster man. She, uh, you know what I mean? Listen, man. She come from the south, man. You know what I mean? She, they, she true Southern. They got that slavery mentality. They seen Django on that. You seen but the yeah, can, cotton yeah, candy yeah. with the cotton candy house or some shit? Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. She from the South. That's nothing. They say nigga like it's nothing down there. And it's black people who allowed them to. Probably that that motherfucker too. Like the old ones, there's nothing. She got some black old bitches that's friends with her. Okay, nigga. But you know she what says mean? that she said it back in the day once. Or a joke. She had a joke. You feel me? Yeah. So it was like, all right. She said it once back in the day. Yeah. yeah, all right. yeah all right. I don't know. Yeah. We right. don't know. Yo, this nigga said her she, peach cobbler. She's innocent no until proven guilty. No, until until no, proven no, racist. No, she, no she, she, <laughs> she's admitted. Uh, even her admitting it made it worse. She cried. Yeah, people are like, oh, no mercy for you. <laughs> Stone her. They went at her neck. And then she had the nerve to do the apology. And she had like been in the um, tanning booth too long. So she was straight red. Yeah. It ain't help. They like, damn, you're going to go do the apology and you straight rednecked it out and shit. Like, mm-hmm. she was born, man. But I still trying to figure out how a lot she know her peach cobbler good and shit. Look, if, if, who, who was it that did, uh, what's his name? Oh, um, our man's, uh, Tiger Woods. Okay. He banged like mad chicks. Yeah, he ran through bitches. And he got his endorsements back, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He got, uh, Rick Ross so got people, his Reebok endorsement back. Yeah, yeah. and look what he said. Yeah, I'm so, he talked about drugging yeah, a woman. Yeah, I didn't, you know what, me. Pop, right? I, Some, I, I, I didn't really care about that. I, did, I always felt they over that shit. Yo, the women, the they women groups, yeah, yo, they, they didn't like Rick. But you know what it was? It was the, uh, what was that bitch name again? Dolores Tucker or some shit. What was her name in? Remember the bitch lap back in the days that came at Snoop Dogg? For gangster rap, yeah. the bitch always had a rap on her head and shit. Like she fucking did, like uh, she was like a psychic, reading human minds and shit. Like, like this bitch came out of nowhere and she was going at Snoop Dogg and you on know, gangster rap. That's all I was. I wonder if she bought the song on iTunes to listen to it, or did she bootleg it? The chick, the chicks that were going at Rick Ross. Yeah, how did they hear the song? First of all, you know we live in a day and age. <laughs> how did they hear the song? Everything is downloaded. Yeah, like get the fuck out of here. Because it's like you tell me one sin, and I'll tell you how many sins you've committed. True. You feel me? True. It's like I didn't. I think I just thought that was over exaggerated, man. Like, well, all these it's, it's niggas that said worse than this, or well, rappers period that have said worse than that, in yeah. they songs. So it was just like something that somebody was trying to come and up they, on. They didn't quick. lose record deals over right. it. You know he, lost, he lost the Reebok endorsement and got the shit right back like a yeah. couple of weeks later. Like it was nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was Swiss Beat sat down with the owners and sat down with Rick Ross and that was it. They were like, all right, we're right back to it. And if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong, <laughs> but I think Rocco even had took him off the song. You know what I mean? So which made no sense because we live once again we live in the day and age of computers. 
You take them on the, off the store where you want to. The shit is still out on the world. Like we all still but have the copy. What's worse, has Rick uh, has Rick Ross admitted to being a drug dealer in his past? Like no, openly? No, he's admitted. No, no, he wasn't a drug dealer. He was a correctional officer. Yeah, but I heard something about he used to sell drugs. He probably did. Who fucking knows? But okay, you know, so what's worse? Somebody admitting that they were a drug dealer in the past or somebody admitting, a white person, that they used the N-word in the past. What has killed more people? Somebody selling drugs in the past to the fiends or the N-word being used once in a joke? I got an applause. <laughs> and look, this is not my personal see, opinion. This is just a question that I've you, crafted you, for you, thoughts. What do you think? Well, this is what I think. A drug dealer would say, well... I had to take care of my mama and my family, and I yeah. had to sell to these fiends. And fiends want it. They're going to get it. They, okay. If they don't get it from me, they're going to get it get from it someone else. else. Yeah. yeah. Why not get it from me? Okay. Yeah. But it's still... But the nigga part... Okay. But, you know, drugs, it goes all the way up to the government. So maybe yeah. that's a bad example. But you get what I'm saying? Well, like, nigga goes all the way up to the government, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it go way back. Yeah. It go, it way, go back way back to why before the government was the government. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> They both, I mean, you know, nowadays we allow the word nigga to slide so much. But we say it with an A. So what makes yeah. it like suave now? Like, like nigga. Niggas. Like, yeah. Niggas. So it's, so it's. But like, that's what makes it suave. So niggas. it's because of the acceptance of the urban yeah. black community yeah. that it's accepted. Yeah. Because, you know, there, there are uh, blacks and Hispanics who don't like the word and don't like to use it. You know what I mean? Also, but it's still gonna always be an active word. Like you remember, like a few years, just like just now recently, they was trying to get off the word nigga. What were we using instead? Man, yeah. It was a substitute word that we had started using. Ninja. Ninja. Yeah. What about? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, yeah, look how long it lasted. Yeah. What about? <laughs> what about with the C? Like C C U H. Nika. Nika. Yeah. So ninja, like, ninja's good. But no, I mean, another but ninja question. Ninja didn't last long. They, they tried hard. They tried. I heard a lot of people trying. How about this hard. question? Let's talk about the urban white community that buy albums. Okay. From Heavy bag. black rappers. Heavy bag. Go ahead. And white <laughs> rappers. There are a few in in between in Latin rap. They buy rap music and they hear the word and then people get pissed at them because they end up using it. But this is the people. This is the the community, the demographic that's actually buying, buying the these album. albums. Exactly. This is where you're getting most of your money from. So, exactly. so, you know, I've heard. I think I've heard some rappers say like, oh. You know, oh yeah, I don't think white people or white kids should use it in general. Or, you know, I don't care. You know, so and so should. But they're buying your albums. You feel me? They put yeah. money, so they could put money they, in your they, pocket. They, but then they, whatever you, whatever they, they listen they to, using the word. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they putting money in your pocket. Uh, you know what's crazy? That's best. You selling the, the n word to them? Yeah. The, the, the best the way to put it up <laughs> is that to sum it up is that. Uh, pardon me. To sum it up, it's like. You can't. They can't say it around black people, but they can say it when they're reciting your lyrics. Mm. I kind of think that's fucked up. Like you're saying, like mm. you put you marketing it to them. That's yeah. who's buying the record. You yeah. know, Tommy's running around in suburban his hoods in the suburban hood, and he's you know reciting all the lyrics. Mm. And I'm quite sure him and his boys. They I've been around a few out of state who have used the word my nigga, right, in my presence, and then they look at me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Your eyes. I'm like, like, I picture them. Yeah, I'm like, and it's like, you know, I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know what? If I wasn't around, like, you, you, you're sagging, you know what I mean? You, you're bling yeah. bling now, you got cornrows. Hey. Y'all niggas, they, 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 they banging, you know what I mean? But like, there they, are they, those urban white cat guys that they're they're on the fake tip, and then there's yes. ones that they really like, yo, this is how they grew up, and yeah. they really yeah. live it like that, you like, know what I mean? Uh, when I first had moved to Michigan, uh, that was my very first experience ever was with a gangster white boy who truly was not faking it. This was his fucking life. Like, he was a, 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 no, he was a folk. He was a folk. And he was banged in by Chicago niggas. And he was known in Michigan. And this motherfucker had black bitches. And everything was my nigga, my nigga. And at first, when I first came across him, the very first day, it was like, uh, one of the you know the black niggas out there, you know black dudes, pardon me, um, you know, and he was a banger, and he, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd be saying this nigga around, to me, and uh, he had brought me around this dude, mm-hmm. so my first meeting him, I kind of was like, Yo, this nigga motherfucker said, hey, what's up, my nigga, like I'm I'm straight from New York, like I ain't understanding this shit, so I'm like, 
Why you gotta watch your fucking mouth? You know what I mean? So he he giving up like, what my nigga? Fuck you mean like? You know, so we both squaring off, and dude between us like, nah, that's my nigga New York. He is calling me New York for it. That's my <laughs> nigga New York. He like, and that's my nigga so and so. And I'm like, why you calling him your nigga? So and and to keep in mind, I wasn't that in tune with the gang mm. out there yet, like yeah. that. Like I wasn't. I didn't know about the folks until I moved out there. I didn't know about the vice lords until I moved out there. You know what I mean? I knew the Bloods and Crips, but I, I didn't know because it wasn't as big here yet. It didn't even come here yet, matter of fact, when I went to Michigan. So when I went out there, it was like, I got exposed to this shit, and I was like, oh, man, I got to learn this motherfucker. I'm like, this white boy has stripes. Like this, I literally watched this nigga fight the cops and everything. Like He swung off on him. Like, oh, like he went in. He had stripes. So they were some gangster white boys who grew up amongst blacks. There's a lot of them. Sold drugs and bang and fuck yeah. black chicks and anything. And he used nigga and they'd be like 50 black motherfuckers rolling with him. Yeah. Was banging black chicks, though. Now he was banging black chicks. He was, he, he was, you know, he was a nigga that was white. <laughs> like, you know, but if it makes any sense. You know what I mean? Because nigga is really like a negative thing. Like it's not a good thing. Like yeah. a nigga is like an ignorant motherfucker. He was a nigga yeah. that was white. And then there's those that they're they're not associated, but they're big. They could fight, yeah. and they'll say whatever to anybody, yeah. and they don't care. See those you gotta hit with a bat. Those you gotta go <laughs> in on. But he those got back up too. I'm like what you said? You heard me, nigga. Yeah. Ah, you got that. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. You can't let the nigga slide with that man. <laughs> gotta go off top. Look, I keep it. Like, I keep it back in my truck. Yo, I didn't know we had a live audience. Uh, I keep it there. Hey, I don't know where them man. claps coming from. They, they, they all over there. Oh. I keep a back. Shout out to Guap. Just came in the building with some food again. Guap. And he was coming with food just for himself when I'm here doing a show. Self is motherfucker. Can I get some brownies? Can I get some. Oh shit. <laughs> this motherfucker doesn't say a fat joke. <laughs> yeah. Nigga said, anybody look healthy to me? He slid that in there. Yo, let's get into a video real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's play. Let's play. Hold up. This is what we're going to do real quick. Yeah. Before you play this video, yo, man. Cause we gonna play the Sam Black next. Before we play this video, all right. I'm gonna take a half a moment of silence for my man. I wanted to start the show off like that, but we got thrown off because the guests ain't show up. So you know what I mean. Got my man Lex setting with me, making it pop. So moment of silence, man, for my man Meech, man, Albie and JC Sass, brother, man. He was killed this week, man. That's my dude, man. Uh, uh, during the weekend, he was chilling with me and Bear. Last weekend, matter of fact, like we was trying to get him to come to New York with us and anything, bugging out. Now, I mean, his bug was somebody just around you. Like, like, he was just in my truck, like, we playing bare music. And then, like, a week later, he gone. You know what I mean? So, I ride up and down Monticello, beat the horn, pull over, kick it with him. Like, his bug, when somebody just gone out of nowhere, you don't expect mm -hmm. him to go. So, moment of silence real quick for my man, yo. Mm -hmm. and, um, all right, I want to play this joint from Sam Black. Uh, it's a good joint right here. It's my Maya. It's about uh, his... His seed, God bless the dead that passed away. And shout out to him too, because he just had a loss last week. His mom's passed away. So, you know, this is a good joint to play right now. You know what I mean? We'll be right back, man. True Talk Sessions Tuesday. You heard? Let's go! Um, shout out to my man, uh, I Can Hit Show. Uh, they, they did, they're on another station, but they deal with uh, boxing, you know, sports, bringing hip hop and sport, boxing together. Uh, they're doing a good job, man. It was in the Jersey Journal about two weeks ago, man. So, you know, I just wanted to come back talking about some good things people are doing out here in Jersey. Shout out to uh, Smash Shits, my dual San Juan, him and Dead Beats. Uh, they shot a video for um, Rich Boy, and uh, they actually, they did it down in Georgia, but they actually did some more scenes in Jersey City last week, and they had Antonio Fargus flying to do a pimp a pimp scene and shit. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's people out here doing some good Good, good things, you know what I mean, out in Jersey where the station is located at. I'm just taking time out to say that because there's so much bad shit that be in the paper, but mm -hmm. let's get into that. Listen, mm -hmm. I left for on, you know, moment of silence when we played the joint. Uh, the Jersey Journal, man. Hey, these motherfuckers, boy. Like, you know, it's a sensitive issue when anybody dies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that you're close to or people are close to. And then for you to read how the media covers it in your hometown or anywhere, you know what I mean? But it's like, it's so insensitive. Like, they had the first day, they had about two lines of him passing away. 
had no more information how it happened or anything. And then it was about three paragraphs of his criminal record. Mm. And they broke down when he was arrested and what it was for. Mm. And none of this shit had anything to do with this man being killed. Mm. The next day, they had an official article in the paper after that. And it was <coughs> about six, seven lines of how he was, you know, killed. And then the rest of the two, three paragraphs was like basically what it was the first time. Broke down his criminal record. Wow. They even used the picture from when he was locked up. And it's like, that was on the cover of the paper. None of this shit had anything to do with why he was killed. That they're going back to the history of his criminal record. And they put, and it's out there advertised. And it's like, oh, so because he was a criminal. Or because, excuse me, because he had a criminal background. Let's mm-hmm. say that. That that justifies him getting killed. Like the Jersey Journal, I, that really made me realize why I don't watch the news on TV at night. Like, first of all, they just give us what they want to give us on the news. You know what I mean? Like, I realized that when Bush made it be that we they couldn't show the bodies coming back from war on the news. Remember that? Like, yeah. that was a big thing. And it kind of continued with Obama, too. And that's when I realized, like, you know, they're not going to show us what we want to see. They're just going to show us what they want to show us. So it's like, I, I've been stopped watching the news. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes I I go in just to catch the sports and you could go on the sports channels now for that. So it's like, that's it. But uh, man, the Jersey Journal, man, I just want to put them on blast, man. That was so terrible. How they, and it's not the first time I've seen it happen, but it's the first time it happened to somebody I know. So that's when it bothered me even more. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what, he had a criminal background. He has a family. Yeah, he has people that love him. You know what I mean? Home, yeah. yeah, so... It's crazy, and and it's, and you you think about these people like us being in the media because we're in media now. You know, what I mean, this is radio, internet radio. Everything, anything is media now. Anything to do with you know putting our stuff out there. We tell the truth, though. We yeah, we tell the truth. You feel me? But when you read stuff like you say, damn, it's people in media. He just you know this is a writer who lives wherever he lives at. And he just really didn't give a fuck. You know, he he jumped on a. The, the, the uh, story real quick and pulled up his name and saw his criminal record. So you couldn't get nothing else. Like, you could have went to his family. He didn't do real reporting. He didn't do no real reporting. Yeah. He sat at home and Googled his name or whatever and got his criminal, and that was it. And man. that was it. You know what I mean? And, like, when you see stuff like that, yeah. I think to myself, I say, damn, if he had any kind of heart or if people are reaching out and he's reading what people are saying in the comments online, he should go out and do a piece on something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let me go back and retract what I did. But they do it so much, mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that this mayor changes so much out here. I'm hoping he does. Well, don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I man, mean, once they get in power, they then the cha- the shackles come on. Oh, I can't do this because they're not allowing me to do this. Well, he's taught the good one. You know they what I mean? He, he's, yeah, but he's even going as far as moving in the hood. So, right, that's that's bold. That's probably the dumbest thing he's done <laughs> since start, since before going into office. That means that lets you know he's planning on cleaning up the hood, though. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's not going to live somewhere where... So, ask me, once that check starts rolling, he'll be like, why am I here? Once he hit those shots at night... <laughs> What the fuck? Man? These niggas is wild. I'm going back downtown. <laughs> like, I mean, who knows? We don't know. He could be the next revolutionary mayor. Yeah, he, he know, might he's go young. fight crime himself. Um, he got a young black dude working for him from the projects. You know what I mean? They actually been friends about five years, so he's been part of his campaign. Um, so you know, we, we'll see. Uh, mm. Get it? You still over there dropping these drops, huh? What the fuck? Wow. Well, that's yo. He gonna have us all in here on some old. Yeah, my brother. Mm. Like we had eating brownies with weed and they, ah, Uncle Ryan the building. <laughs> oh, the boss, man. Oh. The boss, man, it's walked in. Uh, I got to go, guys. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's, yeah, it's yo, bad. It's, it's been good, man. It's been good. It's been excellent, man. I'm liking how the show is going. A uh, shout out to my dude Lex for sitting in. I'm intelligent. Yeah, you know, oh, he's intelligent. He can hold a conversation. Yeah. Uh, let's play another video, man. Um. Lachi, let's play, uh, let's play, uh, let's play Slim and Trips. Right. 110th Street, let's play that. We bring it back, True Talk Sessions, Tuesdays. You already know what it is, yep. man. True Lex, Rod Grizzly, man, we bring it back. Holla back. 15 minutes of fame. Let's go. 